So the Celtics have defeated the Wizards in this play-in game to move on, and they get to play those Brooklyn Nets. And I picked the Wizards to win this game, but now after the fact, I feel like a little bit too much of that was just me picking with my heart because I just wanted to see a Westbrook-Durant first-round matchup. But nothing that happened in this game was too shocking to me. Jay Taters went off and dropped a 50-piece. And that kind of points to what I've said about the Celtics just about all season. I've said at the, at the very first game of the season, the Celtics beat the Bucks, And after the win, I talked about and people got mad at me when I was saying, I feel like your bench isn't good enough. They were saying, well, we just won, so it's clearly good enough. And it's kind of turned out to be true throughout the season. But what I have said is when you get to playoff time, I don't like the team, but Jay Taters, he could be Jason Tatum, Jay Taters, he could be the best player in any given series and that in any given playoff game, and that was shown tonight. That man stepped up, dropped a 50-piece, and I was officially completely out of the Celtics. I was already out on them actually before that, but I was even more out of them when Jalen Brown went down. But if you want to spin another way, a lot of the criticism people have had for the Celtics, and me, me as well, has been, it's just take your turns, iso, iso ball, and there's no ball movement. And at least now with no Jalen Brown, it's kind of the ball moved a little bit better tonight. And part of that you can point to, everyone just knows. We're going through Jay Taters, and when he gets doubled up, we're all going to swing it around. And that's what they did tonight. They did a good job. Kemba Walker, his numbers weren't great. He only had two assists at the last time I looked. So his assist numbers weren't great. But the best play of the night, maybe probably the best play of all season for the Celtics. He had a great split on the double team. Joe to the rim. Had a great pass behind him to Marcus Smart. And Marcus Smart, a guy who never lacks confidence, made an extra pass over to Neesmith and knocked down the three. That's the type of play that we have not seen from the Celtics very much all year. So coming playoff time, playing against the Nets, I don't think the Nets are going to have a problem. I think if the Nets lose, it's going to be them beating themselves, especially the Celtics having no good centers, which is what you need if you want to take advantage against the Nets. But at least Jay Taters can be the best player in any particular game. So I think it's likely that they don't get swept. But for the Wizards, I've got to talk about them before we get back to the Celtics. As I said before, nothing that happened should have been too shocking to me. I mean, Westbrook not being able to play well in a must-win game. I mean, let's not act like we're shocked about that. Even Westbrook fans, like, we're not going to act like we're, we're shocked. But the biggest takeaway, we know that's not, you know, that's likely to happen. But the biggest takeaway is, why is Scott Brooks still a head coach? Genuinely, if you think Scott Brooks is a good head coach, drop a comment. I want to know, like, what's the good reason. I know that his players like him. I know he coddled. I, I don't know. I, I don't, maybe that's too harsh on them, but I feel like he's just been able to stay in the league based on, like, coddling his players and his players liking them so much. But this team is just exemplif it just exemplifies the teams he's always had as a head coach. Back in the Thunder, my problem was that with them was, why are you starting Tabo Sevalosha and Kendrick Perkins? Tabo Sevalosha was okay, but you need guys that can do something with the ball now. And then Andre Roberson, why are you starting these guys that are just your weakest players in your lineup or just that can do nothing offensively? And now it's just the two guys having to do everything for yourselves. And when you get to playoff time, oh, they can really load up on the main two. And then tonight, Raul Neto. I've said this all year about the Wizards. Everyone's like, oh, the Sixers and the Nets, they don't want to see them first round. I'm saying, yes, they do. Yes, they do. Yes, it'll be a fun series. I want to see the Wizards get in. I want to see Westbrook and Beal play in the playoffs. But if you're a top seed, you're not worried for a second. You say, we've got stars too. But the difference is, we could just double your stars because Raul Neto will leave you wide open. In a playoff game where you get a little tight, you might say, Raul Neto had some good moments in the season. I watched a lot of Wizards basketball. I know he did have some decent moments. He's not horrible. But in the playoff time, no one's afraid of him. And when the player pressure gets on, we assume he's not going to do much. Same with Alex Len. And it just lets you throw all the pressure on Beal and Westbrook. And I don't know why Gafford isn't starting for them. Gafford, it should be just Gafford and Lopez at the big. And get Robin Lopez with his unstoppable hook shots and Gafford with his great energy. But, you know, that's Scott Bricks for you. Nothing he ever does makes a lot of sense to me. To me, he's one of the he's probably the last coach in the league that I want coaching my team. But again, that's just me. Let me know if you have a disagreement on that. And uh Bradley Beal, I also didn't really he said he wasn't gonna be hundred percent and I couldn't really tell physically he can't it wasn't like a, a noticeable limp. But it might have been a combination of he probably was still sore and combination of once you say you're not 100%, even if you are good enough, 
like no one's ever fully 100% like kind of like LeBron explained with his quote and even if he wa- even if he is still feeling it when you say you're not it's probably partly somewhere in his head and he struggled to score and I think part of that's the injury part of that is oh you could just bring all the energy all everybody on those two and the other guys are not good role players I thought the Celtics had bad role players but the Wizards, at least the Celtics have a starting lineup with a Fournier, a Kembo, Marcus Smart, guys that can do stuff out there. But when you start on those two guys, I, I give them a chance to beat the Pacers. But right now, I'm actually going to pick the Pacers just because I think they have more good players on the floor. It's just that simple. But let me know what y'all thought. Drop a comment, hit that like, and then subscribe. Please? Yes, sir.